Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here today. Um, it's 10 a.m., so we'll get started. Well, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. So we'll get started with the webinar. Uh, my name is Chanel Wilson. I'm the marketing manager here at Best Bath. Um, and I just wanted to jump on here first before we get started and let you guys know uh, that we'll be conducting a couple polls during this webinar. Um, and feel free to ask a uh, section. We will conduct a couple questions or answer a couple questions during the webinar and then at the end. Um, so without further ado, thank you for joining us today at the webinar for the rising demand for accessibility. Um, I wanted to introduce our host, Megan Multanen. She is the CEO here at Best Bath. She's been here for 10 years. Um, so take it away, Megan. Thanks so much, Chanel. I'm really pleased to be able to join everybody today. Um, and at the end of this webinar, you will all receive an email that contains the link uh, to this presentation. So if there are things that come up for you afterwards, um, or that maybe you think about in the next couple of days, don't hesitate to um, shoot us a message via our Facebook, our LinkedIn, or um, send an email directly to any one of us. I just wanted to um, talk for a second and welcome everybody. Again, my name is Megan and I am CEO of Best Bath. At Best Bath, our products are designed to be useful, beautiful, and easily modified as individual needs and abilities change. We're really proud to work closely with designers, architects, developers, healthcare professionals, contractors, and even homeowners to ensure that our products provide function and value. Truly, our best resource is our customers. We are proud to be a leading manufacturer of composite bathing products. And at Best Bath, we focus on making bathrooms safer and more accessible for everyone. Before we begin, let's take a moment and launch our first poll. We are going to um, launch three polls throughout this presentation. And I hope that each one of you will take the opportunity to just quickly answer that question. If in any of the polls that you are unsure of the answer, go ahead and click that other option. In some cases, you'll be offered the opportunity to tell us what that other is, but if not, we'll try to reach out and, and have that discussion towards the end. Hopefully this will be an interactive presentation. Use that chat function to ask any questions that you have. We have a couple of people who are very generously willing to monitor on the back end, and so we'll be sure that we're able to answer any questions you submit through that chat feature. So as we continue here, feel free to answer those polls while we're moving forward. Since 1969, Best Bath has led the industry in craftsmanship, design, and innovation. We really focus on bathing conditions that are perfect for assisted living and skilled nursing facilities, student housing, multifamily units, and individual homes. Best Math is a family owned, privately held company, and we proudly manufacture in Idaho. As an Idaho native, I am pleased to say that we love being here and we love doing what we do. We pride ourselves on having product that is easy to install, easy to customize, and completely code compliant when required. We're gonna take a minute and end the first poll that we submitted. And it looks like the vast majority of you do use the term accessible when it comes to speaking about these issues with your clients. That's great to know. As we go forward, it helps to sort of understand the language that everybody chooses to use. Not only are we code experts here at Best Bath, but we understand the needs of those wanting to ensure that their homes are accessible. We manufacture first-in-class zero-entry showers, tub showers, drop-in tubs, and shower pans, and we are proud to partner with other companies who take customer service as seriously as we do. We offer a complete line of accessories fitting the form and function needs of commercial construction and residential remodel. Now that we've had a chance to sort of explain who we are to those of you who don't know us, and hopefully reiterate some points to those of you who do know us, Let's get into what we want to talk about today. We know that there is a rising demand for accessibility, but why is this demand increasing? I'm going to explore some of the factors we know contribute to this increase in demand today and why creating livable space in our homes continues to rise in importance. We know that 90% of people 65 plus want to age in their own home, but why is this? 
I'm going to share briefly three key reasons more people want to and plan to age in place. First, let's discuss some U.S. housing inventory stats. According to the U.S. Census Bureau housing statistics, roughly 1 million households were created in 2018, yet only 761,000 new housing units were completed. This number doesn't even account for the houses that were removed from the market due to livability concerns. In July of this year, uh, housing starts were released for those newly constructed housing units and showed a drop of 4% from June. This was the third consecutive month of a decline in housing starts. Multifamily housing also showed a significant decrease in starts. Not only is there pent up demand for housing in general, but we continue to see cost concerns in a number of cities across the country. All of this points to what we know. People are interested in renovating their current living spaces, in part due to a decrease in U.S. housing inventory. Second, we continue to see an escalation of healthcare costs in the U.S. This should be nothing new for any of us. We see this message and hear this message consistently, and in many cases, we've experienced this. According to Genworth's cost of care survey, on average in the U.S., a private room in a nursing home costs $8,365 per month, or $275 a day. For a semi-private room, the average cost is $7,441 a month. Multiple factors can of course affect the overall cost of nursing home stays, including the location and level of care required. Traditional home health care aids that can assist people with their activities of daily living, provide light housekeeping or service companions cost on average $164 a day. That's $4,920 a month, which is nearly half the cost of care in the long run. Additionally, research continues to demonstrate that as people stay in their own homes longer, their quality of life improves. I wanna take a moment here to note that difficulty with bathing is the single most important ADL disability. Bathing driving drives nursing home admissions and mortality. Let that sink in for a moment. Of the five activities of daily living, if you struggle to bathe, you are 82% more likely to be in a facility within the year than somebody who has difficulty with the other four activities of daily living. If you'd like more information on how the development of a disability with any of the five activities of daily living influences nursing home admittance, check out the 2012 research paper from the Botner Center for Pensions and Retirement they're located at the Wharton School in the University of Pennsylvania. The third driver of our desires to stay in our homes longer is technology. Technology has had a massive impact on the living environments and routine life activities of older adults. This is included but not limited to assistive devices that can compensate for motor or sensory difficulties, monitoring and response systems for emergencies and for crisis intervention, and ways to stay connected to loved ones and friends. A good example of an innovative piece of technology that has significantly helped people stay in their homes longer is toilet seat manufacturer Bemis. This company has a toilet seat that can monitor heart rate, blood pressure, and body temperature simply when the person sits down on the toilet. These types of non-intrusive devices allow healthcare professionals and families to help loved ones stay at home longer while ensuring that health and safety is still a priority. Best Bath has previously conducted a webinar on technology and how it positively impacts aging in place. For more information on this and some of the other things we'll talk about today, please visit our website at bestbath.com. So not only is there an increase in, or a decrease in housing inventory, an escalation of healthcare costs, and rapid development of useful technology, which is allowing more people to stay at home, but the US also has an aging population. At present, the U.S. is growing at the slowest rate since 1937. By 2035, there will be 78 million people over the age of 65 in the U.S. For many years, economists spoke of Japan and Western Europe where the slowdown of population growth meant masses of workers reaching retirement age without the generations behind them able to replace them in the workforce. A report from the Economic Innovation Group details parts of the US that are already dealing with this rapid population decline on the levels Japan experienced. We all know that the baby boom generation is still the largest generation in American history, 
and that they are hitting retirement age at a breakneck pace. Living independently for as long as possible means better financial security, possibly better health, and social networking for the largest segment of the US population. Baby boomers also control the most of the nation's wealth, including 54% of household wealth and 57% of income wealth. So what impact does all of this have on home and commercial design industries? Last year, we interviewed over 150 design and construction professionals and asked this very question. Let's talk about what some of the things we uncovered are and how they impact us in our business. We know that clients want to talk about accessibility. What we learned from this survey is designers and architects noted that clients are coming to them to talk about accessibility more and more often. Clients are not just bringing up code issues. Adaptability, accessibility, and universal design comes up at least half of the time, according to almost 80% of our respondents. Our professionals also reported that the demand by clients for accessible living spaces has significantly increased in the last five years. So how important is the accessible living market to your business? We're gonna take a moment here and launch another poll that I hope you guys will um, respond to. And while we're doing this, I wanna note that when asked, almost 50% of our professionals said that accessible living is extremely important to their business. Accessibility is a hot topic and professionals are looking to find the best resources for accessible products and design. Where do people go to learn about accessibility? When asked, they, these professionals said that they, uh, the majority of professionals responded that they rely on product manufacturers, websites, or trade publications to find more information about what accessibility means. We'll continue to talk about what our survey showed us, but we know that not only are professionals in need of more information about accessibility and accessible design in general, they are interested in what the varying terms mean. There are a number of terms or phrases that are used to indicate the ability for people to use spaces independently. I wanna make it clear, we are not going to talk about code compliance or code requirements in this presentation. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 is a civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities. It forms the basis of the accommodations required to ensure that all persons can engage in public accommodations, commercial facilities, transportation and telecommunications. This civil rights law is enforced through codes applied at the local and national level. For more information on code compliant bathroom configurations and to find specific information related to California Title 24, ANZIB, and Texas Accessibility Standards, please visit our website at bestbath.com where you can download copies of our books that focus specifically on code requirements. Chanel, I think we're going to take a moment here to answer a few questions. Um, is there a question that uh, we want to take a moment to answer? Yeah, thanks for taking a sec to do so. Um, we do have a question from Jason. Um, he wants to know, from your experience, what's the biggest challenge when it comes to accessible bathroom design? Oh my gosh, um, that is an excellent question. The There is going to be some subjectivity to this answer, but Quite honestly, from my experience and in, in, in the worlds that, that we have been allowed to participate in and engage in, it comes down to water containment. Um, everybody has been to the gym or stayed in a hotel or maybe even in your own home experienced where water runs out of the front of the shower. And so the natural impulse is to throw down towels or a throw rug or some of those things to help contain that water. Well, in that instance, you're really negating the benefits of that zero entry shower, right? You have this beautiful opportunity to create a space where there's no trip hazards for anybody. And those towels, those throw rugs, those things that we use to sop up the water create an incredible trip hazard. Um, and so there are just a ton of options uh, that, that folks need to consider, whether you're in construction, home remodel, 
architecture or design when it comes to that zero entry shower or um, those spaces where you are likely to have water containment issues. Um, we'll talk about some of those things today for sure, but what I would say to answer that question, Chanel, for Jason, is that it really comes down to thoughtful design and ensuring that you're not just putting in a zero entry shower, but you're, being, uh, you're making sure that that shower is level, uh, that it is installed properly, and that we understand how the people in the home are going to use that shower. So let's continue here. We'll answer a few more questions at the end for sure. Um, but I want to spend a few moments talking about the terms um, that folks use. Accessible, universal design, and aging in place are the terms that we asked our professionals to define for us. We asked the professionals who took our survey to respond with what some of the terms mean specifically to them. And here are a few of those answers. When asked, what does accessibility mean to you? Um, we got the answers, access without limitations. Some of our professionals answered that accessibility means solutions that make the comforts of home to remain within reach. To our professionals, accessibility means able to move freely and independently. And to those who took our survey, accessibility means access to the features in the home that make it a home. I'm gonna launch another poll here really quickly that give you guys another chance to share what terms you use and talk a little bit about um, what products you might use. This poll will continue to run in the background like the rest of them have. So when we look at these answers that our professionals provided to us about what accessibility means, they're not that different from how we at Best Bath define accessibility. We really define accessibility as spaces that can be used by people who have a range of different needs and abilities. In practical terms, when you are talking about an accessible bathroom, that means that that bathroom is main level access. There aren't necessarily stairs or steps that would be required to, to access in order to get to that bathroom. There are a number of excellent options to overcome those types of physical barriers like chair lifts and stair lifts. But we're also talking about things like wide doorways uh, made to accommodate assistive devices such as canes, walkers, or wheelchairs. Adequate lighting for aging or compromised eyes. Non-reflective surfaces where appropriate non-slip flooring, easy to pull drawer pulls, taller toilets that are easier to use, and grab bars placed where the specific members of the household need them. Shower benches or seats are also an excellent accessible design feature, and that an effort has been made to remove barriers that could cause accidents like throw rugs, a complete uniformity of colors in the space, and high threshold tubs. In the end, we define accessibility as the intentional design of spaces that can be used by a wide range of individuals with varying needs. In this example of an accessible bathroom, you'll see a number of these elements, including a low threshold shower with seating and grab bar options, a sink with clear floor space to accommodate a wheelchair, contrasting countertops and flooring, and storage space at varying heights. Remember, there is not a code requirement for accessibility, but in an accessible space, you may see some code compliant elements. Next, we ask the professionals taking our survey to define universal design. Here are some of those answers. To some of our respondents, universal design means holistic design, taking into account all ages, limitations, and accessibilities. To the Professionals who responded to universal design means design for all with no barriers. Some of our respondents noted that universal design means design that works cross-generationally and cross-abilities. To Best Bath, universal design means products and environments should be usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need for specialized design we adopt the Universal Design Institute's definition of universal design. In practical terms, design that is universally designed, a bathroom that is universally designed, 
means grab bars, seats, and shower slide bars are mounted to accommodate everyone in the household from children to seniors. Ergonomics are kept in mind and all spaces are able to be used by all people at the residence. Oftentimes this can mean, again, main level bathroom access, wider doorways that can accommodate assistive devices, adequate lighting, non-reflective surfaces, non-slip flooring, and easy to pull drawer pulls. In the end, we define universal design as a holistic approach. This is an approach to the space where all people without the need for specialized design can use the space regardless of their age, gender, size, or ability. Universal design is not intended to be noticed when you are using it. And that's some of the value that it can bring to a space. In this example of a universally designed bathroom, you can see a number of these elements, including grab bars that don't look like grab bars, shower heads at multiple heights, and seats or benches that can function as storage options, as well as a space to sit when using the shower. A universally designed bathroom doesn't necessarily look like it is designed to be accessible or compliant because it is simply a part of the space that you are living in. Finally, we ask the professionals what aging in place means to them. And here are some of their responses. Aging in place means aging safely in your home, not the home. Aging in place means design that is, supports activities of daily living as people's senses diminish. Our professionals responded that aging in place to them means being able to live in your home until you die. To Best Bath, aging in place means a design concept where spaces are created to be used and enjoyed even as its occupants age. At Best Bath, we talk about aging in place as design that keeps accessible needs in mind. This concept of design is specifically about meeting the changing needs of adults entering their later years of life. In practical terms, this means designing a bathroom with aging in mind thinking ahead to what residents might need, including larger spaces that can accommodate a wheelchair or a walker, proper backing in the walls of a shower so that grab bars and seats can be added when they're needed, lower threshold options that change with the needs of the occupants, options like removable thresholds that allow a shower to look, quote, normal and perhaps have a glass door, but could be removed for barrier-free access as the physical needs of the individuals in the house change. These things are an important consideration in design for aging in place. In the end, aging in place is design that thinks about and incorporates the needs of the future. Aging in place means we are ensuring residents can stay in their home as their needs change specifically due to age. In this example of a bathroom designed with aging in place in mind, you see a zero entry shower with an adjustable handheld shower head. Because this is a best bath shower, we can talk about the fully integrated plywood backing. This feature eliminates the need to find a stud to secure grab bars and seats if they become necessary for the residents in the future. This particular shower can also accommodate a shower door, but can be used with a collapsible threshold and a weighted curtain. While the sink and countertops aren't designed specifically to accommodate a user in a wheelchair, the drawer pulls are designed to accommodate aging hands and joints, and the towel bar doubles as a grab bar, meaning as balance gets less steady, this bar could be used to prevent falls, unlike a regular tower bar. You will notice some elements in this bathroom that are not particularly or specifically designed for aging in place, and that is just the point. Aging in place design is really specific to the unique needs of the individuals in the house and affords them an opportunity to stay in their home longer as the future, as they continue into the future. So let's look at that last poll um, that was launched and um, talk about some of the terms uh, professionals use and even non-professionals use when talking about spaces that are designed for everybody. One of the things that came across loud and clear in the polling that we did last year is that there's widespread confusion when it comes to the terms and how to use the terms in conversation. 
we ask how interchangeable are the terms aging in place, universal design, and accessibility? And we've taken the time to discuss some unique definitions of accessibility, universal design, and aging in place. But there is confusion in the marketplace about how interchangeable these terms are. It's clear that the definitions and designs that fit the definitions have some overlap. In all of these spaces, we talked about doorways that are wide enough to accommodate assistive devices. In all of these spaces, we talked about um, the usefulness and appropriateness of things like grab bars and drawer pulls that don't require excessive strength. But more than a third of the professionals who took our survey said that these terms are only somewhat interchangeable, and 16% said that they are not at all interchangeable. Accessibility consistently appears as the term with the broadest application. It allows for conversations and design discussion that can be refined to address the specific concerns of universal design aging in place, or code compliancy. And according to the respondents in our survey, it is the term they use most often with clients. We also asked, where does accessibility matter the most? Loud and clear, the answer is the bathroom. As I discussed earlier, developing a disability related to bathing significantly increases the likelihood you or your loved one will, be, will move into an assisted living facility. If the goal is to age in place or to stay home longer, accessibility discussions matter the most in regards to the bathroom. 40% of all injuries suffered at home are caused by entering, leaving, and using the bath. 68% of injuries sustained at home occur in the bathroom. And more than $230,000 sorry, more than 230,000 bathroom related visits uh, are people who are visiting the ER annually. When asked to designate a part of the home where accessibility matters most to the professionals taking our survey, 90% responded the bathroom. Discussing accessible design and the trends in livable spaces as it applies to the bathroom has real customer satisfaction results for design and construction professionals. We know that on average, a bathroom remodel is likely to cost $15,000 and according to the National Association of Remodeling, can offer an ROI of 50% to a homeowner. For the design and construction professional, there is real money to be made helping residents design for or remodel for accessibility. Consumer Reports calls out five small details that can make a big difference in bathrooms, including radiant flooring, reducing the use of grout, skylights, and fog-free mirrors. All of these elements can be seamlessly integrated into universally designed bathrooms. The features consumers want are the features that can help make their bathrooms livable for years to come. Many consumers search for features that can enhance the accessibility of their bathroom without even knowing it. When asked, the professionals answering our survey noted that grab bars are the number one top bathroom remodel feature their clients ask about. When installed properly, grab bars provide an easy way to steady yourself in a wet environment. Curbless showers go by a number of names, including zero entry showers, barrier free showers, accessible showers, and level entry showers. We've launched another poll here to ask what you call these types of showers. Design incorporating low threshold showers and the ability to add grad bars isn't necessarily special. It truly is becoming the norm. You can see some of the other top remodel features that our professionals answering this survey responded are important when it comes to making the bathroom an accessible space, including things like shower seats, designing for open floor space, and the counter and sink height. One of the issues that isn't shown here as a top feature is that color contrasting. We see repeatedly an accessible design, universal design, and an aging in place design that an excellent feature as eyes age is the ability to distinguish between, say, the counter and the floor. While white remains a popular color for bathrooms, having the ability to distinguish between the countertop that is, say, gray, 
and the flooring that is white gives people a sense of security as their eyesight diminishes. In our poll that you all took for us as part of this webinar, we see that barrier-free is the term that is used most for curbless showers. So as a result of this poll, what we learned is that accessibility is the most commonly used term with clients. To recap the answers of our professionals, they saw that de the demand for bathroom accessibility is only increasing. We know your opportunities to expand your business and better connect with your clients will come as a result of ensuring that you have these conversations as you design and build spaces for everyone. So at this point, we're going to stop and I'm going to turn to Chanel and find out about some of the questions that you all have been asking as part of this webinar. We don't have the ability for you to ask in person, but we hope that you have been participating actively in that chat function. Yeah, we do have a couple of really great, great questions. Um, Rick asks about implementing some of these features um, when you have space constraints in your design. That's a good question. Um, one of the things that I'm going to tell a little story as we answer this. Um, at Best Bath, we designed a shower that was built for a 30 by 30 space, and we built it for a very specific purpose. There were folks that wanted to use the shower as part of um, basement renovations, right? We're going to add a bathroom down in the basement. If any of you have stood in a 30 by 30 space, you know it's not very large at all. Uh, <laughs> it's difficult to, in many cases, um, keep yourself in the shower, let alone the water in the shower. <coughs> Pardon. Um, so one of the things that we've learned though is that this shower was incredibly popular. And so you can design spaces that have a lot of these elements even though they're small spaces. For example, this 30 by 30 shower has a relatively low threshold height. And while it's not code compliant, something that is that small with a low threshold is still usable by folks with um, say mobility issues or uh, who don't want to um, step over a large threshold. So one of the things you can do when dealing with space constraints is to really look for products that are thoughtfully designed. They may not meet uh, specific requirements, but they can still be used in such a way as to make that bathroom more accessible or more universally designed. Again, we see a lot of dual function products out in the marketplace these days. Toilet paper holders that function as grab bars, so you can use them as supports when getting up and off the commode. Um, spaces like bathroom uh, sinks that have built in storage, um, but still uh, provide some clear floor space for users who may have an assistive device with them. Things like um, medicine cabinets that have a dual function as a mirror and a storage space for, say, medications and toiletries that have less than five pound requirements for, for, uh, for pulling, for opening that. Um, that makes that door on that medicine cabinet easily accessible by people who may have strength limitations. So a lot of these things aren't necessarily identified as accessible, but they give you the opportunity to be thoughtful in your design process about uh, the spaces that you're using. Awesome, great answer. Um, Michael would like to know if we have any feedback on the trench drain for containing water. So that is an excellent question, Michael. It's like we paid you to ask that question. <laughs> Thanks so much for giving us the opportunity to talk about this. Um, trench drains are fancy and they're beautiful and they're trendy and they just do a lot for a space. They can add uh, designer touches, they can add beauty, they can add modernity to a space, and people love them. The trench drain is not an ideal option for containing water. Um, however, at Best Bath, we have gone through two uh, iterations of our specific trench drain, drain and have, are currently in the process of launching our third iteration of that trench drain. Because as you have uh, implied in your question, Trench drains are problematic when it comes to retaining the water. 
There are some key things, however, you want to look for and some things that we as product manufacturers have learned over the years. It is important to remember that water will go where it can. Water is a sneaky little devil when it comes to building construction and design. It will go anywhere and everywhere. So when you have a trench drain, make sure that it is seamlessly integrated with the flooring and with the product that you are using. Whether that's as a floor drain in a bathroom or whether that's as a shower drain in a shower. I would strongly encourage you to look for products where that trench drain is an integral part of the shower pan. Second, make sure that that drain is properly sloped and treated so that the water will actually drain and not cause uh, standing pools of water. Um, third, I would encourage you to make sure that when you specify or call out this product to be used, that the installer understands the importance of installing a trench drain properly. This is one of those products where you can't take it for granted that it will install like everything else you've done. Make sure the folks doing the actual installation work understand the nuances of the trench drain when it comes to installing it. And then finally, I would encourage all of you who are interested in trench drains to really do a feel test on those trench drains. Stand on that trench drain in your bare feet. Does it feel rough? Does it feel slick? Does it feel like a, uh, a space should when you think about the people in the home or the facility using it? If you were in an assisted living facility, per se, uh, skin as it ages um, becomes more delicate and if you have a trench drain that has a rough finish to it or um, a slick finish to it it's possible that that might pose more than a ha uh, more of a hazard than you would think to those whose skin on the bottoms of their feet has begun to age. Awesome great info. Um, let's see Michael has a lot of good questions today. Have you seen the demand for walk-in tubs change over the last few years? I have seen the demand for walk-in tubs change over the last few years. Um, we do, walk-in tubs are another one of those products that are really flashy, they're really sexy, they get people's attention. People want to learn more about the opportunities to use walk-in tubs in their homes and in their commercial spaces. The idea is a fabulous one. As we age, it gets more and more difficult to one, get up and over that traditional tub shower threshold, and two, get down into that traditional tub, and then three, get up out of that traditional tub. Um, frankly, that traditional tub is not great unless you are fully able-bodied and perhaps even um, a fairly small individual. The walk-in tub can address a lot of these issues for folks. However, the walk-in tub requires a fair amount of mobility itself. In most cases, you need to be able to step up and over that threshold. And while that threshold is smaller, it still exists. You need to be able to efficiently and effectively maneuver through the doorway and get it closed while you are in the tub. For many people, this requires a level of mobility that is very, very difficult. So people are attracted to, want to see, and expect to like walk-in tubs, but the reality is for many homeowners, they're not a practical application. In terms of our specific dealer network, folks that are dealing with home renovations, we still see on average for every shower sold, I'm sorry, for every walk-in tub sold, um, seven to eight showers are sold to homeowners. So it's a ratio that tells us that while people like the idea of a walk-in tub, in practicality, they're just not used as much. To answer your specific question about the demand changing, I don't know that the actual demand is changing, but we see more and more people interested in these products as a quote, end of life product in the home. If somebody is installing a walk-in tub product in their home, they do so with the notion that it will come out before that home is sold again. So it's something that is necessary, something that is needed for the current resident, but something that might not be of use or, or that the next resident might not even be interested in. So we see it as a pretty temporary solution. That doesn't mean it's a bad solution. It can still be an excellent solution for that current homeowner. But there is a feeling um, and an idea that this is a temporary solution. We also see a lot of walk-in tubs that are manufactured overseas and assembled here in this uh, country. That makes the price point much more reasonable for folks. 
Um, and so I've seen a lot of changes in the marketplace. Walk-in tubs are also one of the most heavily advertised adaptability, accessibility, safe bathing products out there. All of us have seen those commercials or those inserts in the Sunday paper. So it is a heavily saturated market in terms of recognizability. Awesome. Uh, Barbara would like to know specifically, are we providing a curbless shower pan that does not demand changing the floor joists? Yes. The simple answer to your question, Barbara, is at Best Bath, all of our accessible products are products that do not require recessing. I would strongly encourage any of you um, who have dealt with accessible products and remodel um, to be aware of the difficulties that come with recessing. Um, when you are notching joists, when you are getting into the floor like that in any space, it adds a lot of time, labor, and potential for disaster. Look for products that do not require recessing. All of Best Bath's low threshold, barrier free, and compliant shower pans do not require recessing. These are products that are pre-leveled at the factory that drain um, perfectly to slope and to the drain and then can be adhered to the subfloor either with the epoxy and uh, glue provided or by nailing the surround uh, or by screwing the surround to the flanges. <clears throat> you have many options as well for remodel product where the drain does not need to be relocated. For many people, the ideal scenario is to have a center drain as you have a barrier free or low threshold or curbless shower. But there are options for residential remodel where you can retain the drain of that traditional tub shower and put in a no threshold or low threshold shower without, um, uh, without recessing into the floor. All right. I'm gonna take a little water break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chanel. Um, so Tina would like to, let's see. She said, I saw in Florida that some houses have a six inch curb. Um, step down shower. Thoughts on using these for accessible use? Step down. So I assume that to mean that it may be level entry, but you are stepping down into the shower, which is recessed. Or you may have a curb that's like, say, two inches up, but you're stepping down for a total of a three, in a six inch curb that is down below. Um, I personally am not a fan of this type of shower where you have to step down into the shower. I'm a relatively young relatively able-bodied person, and that's a dangerous scenario for even me to engage in. How many of us get up in the morning and don't have our full and complete faculties with us while we enter the shower? We're hoping to gain that clarity of consciousness and wake up and greet the day while we're under the hot water. And that's not an intuitive way to get into a shower space, to have to step down into it. Um, additionally, it poses hazards as we age, and we talk about some of those things that become more difficult, like balance. To fully engage in a space like that, you, I would strongly recommend you have grab bars and supportive devices that people can use for balance as they step into the shower or as they step out of the shower. Generally speaking, if you look at um, a design in a household, anytime you have a transition change like that, whether it's stepping from the kitchen into say the family room or stepping from the family room into, um, into the den, if you have a single level threshold change like that, um, it's, a, it's a strong indicator of a place where folks might experience balance difficulties or they simply might not see it. I grew up in a home that had a transition like that. Many of us did as that was a relatively popular design transition in the 70s. Um, and even as a kid, I remember hitting that with my foot and tripping over it. You will see showers um, that have the threshold that you have to step over that can be six. Um, I've even seen eight inch thresholds. Um, and those are not uh, intuitive to us as humans because the vast majority of thresholds that we see out there are fairly consistent um, with four or so inches. And so we sort of have that muscle memory and expect that kind of step over when it comes to a shower. All right. Um, Karen would like to know if Best Bath makes any custom curbless shower pants. So yes, we do. Excellent question, Karen. Um, at heart, Best Bath is a custom manufacturer. That's what got us to where we are and what we do. Um, we do the vast majority of our customizations for commercial projects. I will uh, say that. We uh, 
lead the industry in the ability to design, implement, and build uh, those custom showers as needed for projects with unique drain locations, unique size requirements, or maybe spaces where you're remodeling a um, post-tension um, concrete slab building. And so you need to be very careful about where your drain relocations are. We do have the ability to customize uh, sizes and pans on a much smaller scale. Um, however, we do have over 800 model configurations at our fingertips, simply because we've been doing this now for more than 50 years. So generally speaking, we have a product that will meet your unique customization requirement. However, if we don't, we are capable and are proud to be a customizable manufacturer. Great. Uh, let's see. I have time for a couple more. Um, Thomas would like to know what is the recommended height for thresholds in roll-in showers? In, uh, there are code requirements, Thomas, that will address that for specific municipalities. Recommended heights uh, in terms where code does not need to apply, such as a single family residence, would be something of uh, an, around an inch. Around an inch gives you the opportunity to use any flooring uh, that you would like in the bathroom, whether that's tile or laminate, and doesn't necessarily require a ramp so that a wheelchair or a shower chair that will be uh, pushed into the shower um, couldn't roll over that one inch threshold. You do have lots of options, including uh, showers that are considered roll in with up to a two inch threshold. Um, however, I think that the practical application of that becomes difficult and requires some force and strength to get that roll in chair or wheelchair over that two inch threshold. So I would tell you, unless you're meeting a specific code requirement, to look at thresholds that are an inch or less. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, so last question. Um, well, here's a quick one. Uh, does the fiberglass shower go directly on the plywood subfloor or should there be a waterproofing? With best bath showers, you do not need to use any waterproofing. No hot mopping, no green boarding, no um, sheeting underneath the shower or behind the shower walls. Our composite showers are designed to go directly to the subfloor and studs, which saves you labor and material costs. Okay, and final question. Uh, let's see. What codes does your product comply with for residential products? or projects? So it depends how you define residential products. For, um, for example, um, single family homes rarely have a accessibility code that they are required to meet. The state of Massachusetts has um, code requirements that are required and our products are listed with the state of Massachusetts and are able to go into single family residences that are going to meet, meet a um, code. All of our product is UL listed. Um, we have the appropriate IATMO codes and the plumbing codes um, so that you can use any one of our products, whether it's accessible or not, um, in a residential project. When you talk about multifamily housing or student housing or things of that nature, nature that are residences, but have more of a commercial application to them, we have a whole section of product that is designed to be ANSI compliant and meet the needs of those developers and architects um, helping the owners ensure that the livability and rentability standards are met in places like multifamily housing um, and student housing. You can see that stuff on our website if you want a little more detail about that. Um, you can go through all of the code compliant product that we have, um, including the ANSI B product, um, and then some of the specific municipal products that meets California Title 24, Massachusetts, Texas, Texas Accessibility Standards, and then what Canada calls barrier-free compliant product. A wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Thank you so much, Megan. Um, we have a ton of other questions. Um, some are specific to Best Bath products, some are specific to um, some of the terms we talked about today. And so we will get back to all of you with answers or um, directly contact you offline with some of those product questions. Um, we will also have the recording of this webinar available to you um, and any resources uh, to specific products that Megan might have mentioned in the presentation. 
Um, but we do appreciate everybody joining us today and sticking around through the entire webinar and more to come down the road. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Megan. You. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for participating with us today.